behind the eight ball? Like, how difficult has it been building relationships with guys when you get here in only a few months to kind of get to know them and everything? Like yeah, I mean, it's the crossover from where I came from to here. We weren't through a lot of some of the same guys. So just that, get on the road, get running, talk to the coaches, talk to the kids. Uh, try to get as many guys on campus as you can. I mean, recruiting is recruiting. It's just going after bigger, better fish here. So uh, the adjustment to that was guys I used to see on the internet and watch their tape and be like, wow, they really did to coach those guys. Now you get to go after those guys a little bit. What, what has been your strategy, I guess? I mean, when you get your foot in the door, like first conversation and all that, like how's it evolved? What's your strategy when you are maybe, like I said, a little behind the people? Yeah, I mean, you just got to tell these guys that how you're going to develop, you know? Tell them about this place. I mean, you really don't sell kids in recruiting. You give them it's information. You give it to them, right? So if they're a high-caliber kid that wants to play at the top level, compete for national championships, compete for conference championships, that's what this place is. And then how can we get you there? Based off how we feed them, how we train them, how we coach them. So uh, you just kind of try to pepper them with all the different information they can have, so they feel good about it. And then along the way, you build a really good relationship with them. You know, their likes, their dislikes, uh, buttons to push with the kid, what drives them. Kind of those types of things. Yeah, with, with, with Coach Solene, I mean, what, what can you tell us about him? What he brings to the table? This is a coach, and I know he was the interim guy for four, the last four games. Before. Yeah, well, Mike and I was—we come from like the same tree, so our lineage of the, the O-line tree that we come from. So the, the verbiage and stuff is a lot simpler to get used to. Um, but the, the perk of that is there's four eyes and two mouths that are seeing saying the same thing. Uh, he relates really well with the kids. Um, he recruits hard. He's communicating with those guys, with their parents, with. You know, with the coaches, with all the people meet this. So he just he's been brought up the right way. He knows all the inner workings to what's going on. So you have three offensive line recruits in this class already. Can you just take the rest of the cycle off? Like, yeah, so yeah, that's why I'm here in my sweatsuit yeah. and my feet up on the table. No, yeah. come off the road to see everybody here at the table. So no, it never stops. It's like recruiters like brushing your teeth. You gotta get them more and do it every day. Um, and so you're, you're, you know, you're looking at guys that. In this class for 23 to finish that, you're looking at guys at 24, you're evaluating 25, you're trying to get kids to camp, you're trying to go out and uh, see kids again that maybe, I mean, the biggest thing about, especially linemen, is you can see a kid in the fall that maybe he was 240, and now you go back and see him in the spring and he's 280. And that's natural maturation. So all of a sudden that guy becomes a guy, he gets on the radar. So you can never stop recruiting, you've got to continue looking at these guys and, and uh, you know, covering the area. We're covering Ohio. I mean, I hit every school in my area in Ohio the last couple of weeks because that's important for us too. And, Coach say to do that, so no, it never stops. But when you you can't take anything for granted that nobody signed until December. Um, but when you take care of business in your backyard early, does it allow you to put some energies nationally, maybe in this? Yeah, I mean, you, we're, we're playing no matter what. You know, I mean, you got to recruit your area, and then you got to work from the inside out. It's kind of how we've done it here, um, and, and what we're looking at. So um, whether you have six guys come in in the class or no guys come in in the class, you still got to you got to recruit every day, right? Um, like I said, when they're on campus with you, uh, you get them here as many times as you can. When they're not here, you got to make sure you're seeing them and, and evaluating. And that's how you that's how you turn over the next guy. You know, that story of every year in the draft, there's a guy. Well, where'd this guy end up here? How do you end up here? Maybe he just popped a little later than what the recruiting cycles accustomed to being. Right now. So you got to keep working. When you uh, brought this morning, Brian said. Oh yeah, uh, chances a lot of guys just through you know guys getting banged up or nicked up a little bit get a lot of reps, which was good. Um, you know, uh, Enid was inside, took some reps on both sides, left side and right side. Um, you had the chance to see Jacob James get a bunch of reps, uh, which was good. Um, you know, uh, you know you missed. You know, Josh a little bit in the spring, you like that's more reps with that, but you just, that's all you do, you just keep developing the guys that are around and that, and we've got through fall camp, and then you shake it out, and hopefully you have eight, nine guys you feel comfortable getting in the game right there. How about you not coming this? I mean, the guy's going to be What have you seen from him in the He's still adjusting through that. I mean, a guy that just doesn't shut down when you get that much adversity, it's really good. So for him, um, he's still growing through it. That's something I went through that in college at the same age as my dad. And, and there's no timetable where like uh, in six months you're gonna feel better. You know, it's a process, and everybody works through that. Um, he's doing a really good job. He's still adjusting. I mean, there's times where we talk and doing things, but 
in the, the sanctuary and the time to like take a deep breath, as we talked a little bit before, is when you're out on the field. Like when you're at practice and you step on the line, it's like you can shut that down for a little bit and just leave everything on the outside. Um, and he really tried to do that this spring. Did you come to practice? Physical. Powerful. Right? Um, best games ahead of them still. You know, a lot of these people. A lot of these kids were like in high schools and they come out of programs where like they didn't get spring football or they didn't get to do it year round. Then their best ball still ahead of them just by more reps and more strength and more seeing it. So um, I'm excited about him in the fall. From practice one to practice 15, where did you see your two presumed starters to tackle take the biggest step? Uh, just understanding the inner workings of the game, I think. You know, because the tackle position, I mean, Dwan's taking a lot of reps, Paris moving back out there. Just the understanding of when I have help, when I don't have help. Um, you know, if I'm on slide side versus man side, what can I do? You know, cutting my splits, doing some things. So I think the, the inner workings and the tools of the game really, those guys started to gravitate and grab onto of like, oh, this is the play where I can do this and this will help me. So that, you know, it eliminates, trim some of the fat on the plays as you go. I'm not asking you to, to make a declaration that's going to be a first round pick. Do you see the tools in Paris that a lot of people see? No, he's a, he's a highly skilled guy. I mean, he's he's going to uh, pull the combine out of the water, and he's going to test well. He's going to jump well. He's going to uh, do the interview phase as well. I mean, he's a high-level player. We just we're going to get him there to, to play that way. Because ultimately, that's what you got to do when you press play. You got to play like a first-round draft pick. So all the, that's all these guys are spying that. Dwan on the other side. I mean, Luke Whipper on the inside. Matty Jones, you know, is kind of coming out of the shell. Like all these guys, they're all just trying to maximize themselves. You know, and let, let those guys that uh, were in Vegas this past couple of weeks let them make the big boy decisions that way. Is that a different level of pressure, though, to go into a season and see your name kind of projected as a first round pick? Uh, you know, I, personally, I wouldn't know. I was always, <laughs> I was always that guy, like, yeah, he's a starter. He played a lot of games. He's a tough, you know, all those adjectives of he's a tough guy. He's a great kid. He's, you know, a smart football player, which really meant you're just not good enough. But, um, so I never had that problem. I would assume so, but I picked. Paris and Dewan, all those guys that are coming in the back end of their career now and start seeing the stuff like they're they're locked in. I get I get videos and calls from Dewan at home right now when he's on his break. Like, coach, I'm doing this set. Is this good? Like, they're just workers. They just want to be great. So, you know, whatever you guys write, whatever's on the TV, yeah, that's out there. You can't say, oh, they don't see it. But I just have a good feel with these guys right now. Like, they're just they just want to work and be their best. And you know, whatever happens, it's supposed to happen. Do you tell a veteran like? Uh, Matt Jones on the inside and a second year center like Luke from first year offensive line coach. How important is that, not only for the offensive line, but for you to be able to put things in and know that those guys are experienced enough to just pick up? Um, I mean, yeah, it helps having experienced guys because then you're never going to skip a step, right? You're going to install phase one and then two and three and four, but as you're going through that, you may progress a little faster. Um, so I think it's just a comfort for those guys. And then once again, like, it's not really about me, but like, if I'm CJ or one of the quarterbacks sit behind, like, that's where I have a lot of confidence. So I'm like, that guy knows what he's doing. That guy's going to make the call and that guy's going to do his job so I can just do my job. So more of a comfort thing, like for me, like we're going we're gonna to coach it, we're going to install it, we're going to drill it. When you have really good players like those guys, they can do it at a high level. You got to get them to do that. And the guys around them are the ones that really, that's where the more comfort is for those guys. You're sort of talking about like in recruiting, maybe before, hey, oh, those were guys, I'd love to recruit a guy like that. Here at Ohio State, you have that opportunity. This is obviously nothing against any player you've ever coached in your career, but there are some guys on this roster, Paris, DeLon, right, who have obvious NFL goals, high-end NFL goals. Is it any different coaching guys like that? Again, you've coached great players, but maybe not somebody for instance with the natural skills of um, Paris Johnson. You mean different than what? I don't know, dive do in have, deeper. Do you, do you to, to pull the best out of somebody who has that much natural talent? Do you talk to them any differently? Do oh, you, well, do I, you I, I just them I should say in a different style, or do you demand um, more? Of no, them? in my opinion, is like you just you have to have a good temperature gauge of every kid, right? The old days, in my opinion, once again, just you know the old guy's opinion, but like the old days are like this is how we do it, this is why we do it, and go do it. If you don't do it, get the hell out of the way, like. You can't coach or teach that way. Everybody has a different path to get them to be their best version of themselves. So our job is on the field, obviously, right? So no, you find out what makes Paris tick. You find out what makes Donnie tick. You find out what makes Luke tick. Like you just go around these guys. How do you get Jacob James to play his best? And then you hold them to that standard and poke and prod and push or hug or love or whatever the adjective is there to get them to maximize themselves. Because then when it's third and two, it doesn't matter how they get there. We've got to get the first down. 
So whether you do it with a little bit of sugar and salt with this guy, and it's a little more gruff with this guy, and it's a little more tip sheets or walk with this guy, like that's your job as a coach is to find a way to make those guys be at their best. And then along the way, as I've said multiple times this minute, like then that's where the relationship is. Because then they look at you and have the utmost of trust. Like this guy's going to get the best out of me, so I'm just going to give my best. And it's not a we're button heads or I'm doing it for the coach or I'm doing it for this. Back to what I talked, like I got to protect with CJ's got to throw the ball. Right? That's not about me. That's about the guys there just being their best and doing that together, doing that. So, I mean, no, I mean, no. You just you coach the kids, and that's that's part of recruiting. You get them and you find out what makes them tick, how they go, how they fit in your room, and then you kind of find the way to get them to be their best. Each individual guy holding the standards of the room. Is getting is preparing the guy to play his best on Saturday to help the team win yeah. the same as preparing a guy to get ready for the NFL to maximize his potential yeah, I mean, at I the think next level? Are there good. things that you do differently? Nah, if you play good football, then you'd be a pro football player. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we just got to get him to play their best. Um, and like I said, all these guys they have aspirations; they should sure to yeah. do that. So. That's our job, just to work and work and work and maximize their skill set so that they all can end up doing it. Now, with with Paris, he's gone from tackle to guard, now back to tackle, and I think because he's such a natural fit at tackle, yeah. people, I think, kind of assume the transition is going to be more smooth and seamless than maybe it might wind up being for him. What have you noticed in sitting down and watching film with him in the spring ball and the spring game? What have you noticed that he still needs to sort of tweak or refine? I mean, everything. They're all going to work that. Uh, being inside versus back out in space is an adjustment. Um, your footwork when you're reaching a wider five technique versus a three technique. There's a lot of technical stuff that are different. So we just got to keep working it. I mean, he had a great spring. He got better every day. He, he you know, as we talked here, this period, you know, after practice, they said, hey, Paris, you played major college football tackle for eight practices. I feel like, oh, I'm getting it. I'm feeling good about it. So it's just a daily thing with all these guys. I mean, it's a, you could say the same with Dewan. Now he's going into year three playing tackle. We gotta get better every day. There's something we can work on. There's something we can find to make it better. So, um, you know, it's just that's just a daily push with all those guys. And how, do you, how frustrating is it to deal with the portal and the continued recruitment of your own players? It's added. It seems like it's added another job to the plate. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked a little bit recruiting earlier, but yeah, there's there's maybe always something behind door number two. But like, you're not. To re-recruit your player, like that's a term in my mind that just got thrown out there. Like I don't really know what that means because you don't really do it. when when they're your guys and you're just truthful with them and you try to coach them right and you try to bring them along and then they end up playing that way or they don't, like they're gonna make their own decisions that way. So to say like, oh, hey, how's this going? How's that going? How's your parent? Like we already do that, you know. Like they're all at home right now and guys are around and you call them and talk to them. How's your day going? How you doing? Yeah. George, you know, George is back in Denver. Hey. You're breaking a bunch of girls' hearts because you're not going to be there for prom. Like, that's just the relationship part of it that you should try to build with those guys already. So the the re-recruiting, I mean, yeah, I guess there's always something out there that's new because it's it's all new, right? But from a standpoint of do I sit and worry about oh I got to make sure I talk to this guy because I don't want him to leave or do this? Like, yeah, you should already do that as a position coach, right? When you did you see that from him? It seemed like he's more of a yeah, just because the game slows down. Like when you start learning the game more, just like I talked with these tackles on the edge and, and, and you know, even that did that. Like when it clicks and that light bulb goes off, like, oh, that's what we were talking about. That's what we were looking at. And then that hits, the, the game slows down. You know what we just talked? You don't get incrementally faster or that much stronger at age 21, 22, 23 at the back end of your career. But the game slows down because you see it more. You know, he's a student of the game. I mean, he's texting, we're texting stuff back and forth all the time. Did you see this clip? Did you look at this? What's this guy doing? So he's, I mean, he's a student of the game, as they say, um, but he lives that way every day. He's just, he loves ball. So that's how he's able to continue to get better and better. And, uh, Diving into the scheme, understanding the schemes, understanding the techniques, understanding the why as opposed to just doing it because we're told to do it. You were talking about your offensive line tree. What's your tree? I mean, it goes all the way back to um, my stuff from George Day the Owner. George, George coached you know, Steve Adazio and brought him up in the business. And I was under Steve for a bunch of years. Um, and then John Hevesy was who Mike worked under. John Hevesy was at uh, Syracuse way back in the day with George and those guys. So um, that 
lineage of that is kind of, you know, you, you have maybe different verbiage, you have maybe different things, but you're philosophical how you want to block guys, how you want to get technique in front of those spots, close that thing. That's why I was excited about him, because I knew he was kind of brought up in the business, right? What is that philosophy then in that tree? Are there different, I and mean, obviously there's there's other people, there was this coach who taught this guy, taught this guy, taught this guy. Is there something common about the people in your tree that you offensive I just think when, you, when you've when you heard it and you've seen it and you've looked through those lenses long enough, then like I said, you're seeing the same thing and saying the same thing of uh, whether it be your eye progression with the defensive front, whether it be, you know, teaching blocking from the ground up and all those things. I mean, they're all, <laughs> they're all good ways. You can block guys from a two-point stance to a three-point stance, from a run and shoot to a wing tee to a spread to a power offense to a 12 personnel. They're all good plays. They're all good ways. But if you if you're bit into your way, you coach it with conviction. Uh, you've had success with success with it, and you kind of build your book of work that way. Then that's where you're able to develop these guys and the players in that system that you're recruiting. Was there anything when you got here with the way Ryan and Kevin and everybody in the offense, the way they call the offense, what they want to do here? Discussions of like, okay, you guys like to do it like this. Actually, I like it if linemen do this or if we do something. Was there anything that you had your philosophy of offensive line play? No, no, nothing, nothing spectacular. I mean, at the end of the day, it's got to coach your guys. So, coaching the techniques, coaching the fundamentals, keeping it within the scheme of what you do. Um, and just, you know, attacking and trying to, as we say, like, hero what ails you. So, if your feet aren't in the ground, you're softer with your footwork, then you got to go drill that. If you're running this style of play, then you got to vest your time to task on that style. Of play. So, I mean, nothing nothing major that way. That was, that was another conversation with Ryan and Kevin about. We're, we're looking for this specifically. Uh, going, going back to Paris real quick, how, how exhausting has it been to answer question after question after question? I, I, we've all heard that he's this information sponge. Or not, not exactly. I mean, we, when when guys love the ball, then you can love them back. You can give them as much as you want. Uh, he has been that way. And sometimes it's an easy answer. Sometimes it's well, you figure it out. That's what you need to do. So that's that's coaching. That goes back to it. Like you can't just feed him, feed him, feed him. You know, if he wants to be a great player, he's got to figure stuff out on his own. So there's some things where it's like, hey, that's a great question. Here's why. And there's been other times where, like, uh, why don't you watch it on the film and come back with your own answer before you have me answer? So that's how you, that's how they learn to teach, but not. It's, when guys love ball, it's, it's not exhausting at all. Is there like an example or two like questions really trying to hang on specific uh, No, I mean he's all over the ball. I mean the run game, the pass game, screen game, protections. Uh, adjustment calls, all those things. He's he's just an information craver. Like, well, coach, why are we doing that? Oh, okay, that makes sense. So I can use that here, here, and here. Yes. All right. When would we do this? Would I do it here? No. Here's why. Oh, okay. He's just in it. He's, he just wants to collect the information. So this, because he wants to be right. He wants to be great. So not not exhausting at all. When you talk about Donovan Jackson, the tools that he has as an offensive lineman, what are the things that stand out of the things you're trying to develop? I mean, all the things we just talked about. I mean, he's a natural bender, he's powerful, he's explosive. He plays the game with good pad level. Um, and now we've just got to kind of continue to grow him to that level where the game slows down for him. He plays it. He can play at a high, high level. That's level. He's just got to make sure that he plays at that level and that comes with understanding the front structure, understanding the scheme, whatever we're doing. Now. But it's excited to work with him because he's the same deal. He's a great kid. He loves ball. He wants to watch extra film. He wants to watch, uh, take extra reps after practice when we shut down. You know all those things. So I mean, for him, like film is not even extra for him. Like it's just this is how much I got to watch because I want to get right. So there's there's no time stamp on him where well, I have five hours a day where I can do it. And after five, well, I'll do five and a half, and it's extra. Donnie understands if it takes him five and a half or six a week to do it, then that's what he's going to do. When guys are they get experience playing guard, tackle, different spots on the wild college level, I know when they're going through an NFL draft process, it's like this is how the versatility of knowing those spots are going to How is that over range to you or is that is that actually quite value? No, I mean I think to us, like what what's the end? It's not like a book record. Like we've got to maximize their skill set. We've got to do what they're really good at here. 
if along the way they've played a guard position or a tackle position or they put their hand on the ball and snapped a little bit, I think I don't think I know. Yeah, that helps at the next level because those guys. They, I mean, they're you're keeping eight guys up and you're dressing maybe seven in the game day. So you got to be a multi-flex person, you know, position guy unless you're that key guy for them. So I, I think it helps those guys, but that doesn't really go through our thought process as much as it is to put the five best on the field so that people win the game. Day. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody asked you this, so I'm sorry. Do you anticipate everybody being back to full strength in time for August? Uh, for, yeah, yeah, we should be back full strength. And we had a couple guys get banged up a little bit here and there in spring, but nothing major. Um, so being able to have everybody back. Uh, and that's great, too, when you have that much depth, because when you're not taking a rep, you can watch your rep on tape and get a mental rep. Right? And when you have enough guys to take all those reps, they're getting a rest, so you're 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 working and executing individual. You're working and executing practice. You're not just getting through or having to save yourself because you're limited on the amount of guys that are taking those reps. You know, so that's that's going to be good for obviously the guys that miss the reps, but for everybody as we come back. I was thinking the last couple of weeks it kept coming up. Ryan would say uh, the offensive line depth out there. I'm not part of those injuries, but for your first camp to not you know, to have to deal with that big patchwork at times maybe and not have <laughs> two full units to roll. Not, that, did you feel like that limited you at all, or, or how did you manage March and April in your mind? Um, just through spring ball. I mean, you just the guys that you had available, you went with. Right, we had to slide some guys. Some guys took some double reps. That's all. Um, you don't love to do that, but extra reps, you never killed anybody yet. You know? um, but no, you just you get through spring, you see that. Now we go to the summer, the kids back get back with Mick. Uh, they get back in the film room on their own, doing some things. We hit fall camp. Then I can be a little more targeted through fall as we get climax and closer to the games. Like, all right, here's our eight, nine, ten guys we're going to roll with. Um, and then you can really settle into the, those guys that way. But, you know, getting everybody back will be key because then that creates a competition with, behind some of those younger guys. And, you know, like I said, good quality reps and all those things you're really looking for. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not that specific other than like this is Ohio and so we went out in spring recruiting, we got to make sure we hit our areas, right? We're hitting all the schools and we're making sure we're getting places. So I went to a handful of schools in my area where the coach was like, Coach, this is great, thanks for coming out. Like, we don't have anybody that's your caliber, but we appreciate you coming by. Um, I think you have to continue to do that no matter where you're at in your home state um, so that if there are years that pop up where you have multiple Ohio State caliber players, then that's not the first time in three years you've seen those guys. So that's just the right way to do recruiting wise. Um, you know, in specifics to what Coach Day said as we came in, like there was no specific that way. It's just you got to recruit at a high level, you got to bring in high quality student athletes, and you got to manage your position. So um, if it's fortunate or not to get on a plane, train, and automobiles to get those guys, and that's great. Um, if it's a year when we can't do that, then we're going to get the best players to play. Jerry? Yes. I mean, you're still recruiting every day. So, yeah, I mean, we're off the road today. Uh, get a chance to catch your breath a little bit and head back out next week. But, um, recruiting never stops, you know. Um, and so, for us, like I said, I'm going to – there may be a kid as we go the next couple of weeks that pop and he's gained 20 or 30 pounds or whatever it may be. And, oh, wow, he looked good at 250. Now he's 280. This is a guy we need to revisit, right? Is there a, a – Kid that moved in. I mean, you've got to continually work your area. You got to work your position every day um, because you really, obviously, you don't have them until they sign there in December or February. Um, and so you just got to keep working recruiting every day. Do you have a? This is just. A, I'm just curious. Do you have a preference? Uh, pros and cons of zoning versus gap blocking. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've done both. You got to match your skill set. You know, I mean, if you got a bunch of guys that are bigger and thicker and plotters and can't move as well, um, and you don't want to put them in space as much, then maybe you're more on that gap wall, right? Um, but then they, once again, we may have guys that they can't pull well enough or they're not skilled enough to do that. So what kind of gap schemes are you doing? Um, you know, I just like the, 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 you know, kind of a, a seacoast offense, right? Like if you see it and you like it and your guys can do it and it can make you better, then you coach that and you do that. So it fits the skill set of guys. I, I know he's obviously he's a running back, but have you worked with Travion at all as far as like blocking techniques or hand techniques, anything like that? No, I mean Tony does. They do a good job with that stuff. Trail spend a little bit of time with us on some off days and special teams or those things. So if he's in, then we talk more schematics of protection. Um, I think it's good for him to hear 
us up front, what we're seeing and saying and doing. So as he's just sitting in there, he just gets a big picture, you know, kind of opens his eyes to it. Kind of back to what he's talking about with Luke. Like, I think a more veteran player, like, he's not going to get incrementally faster, but he may be able to play faster if he knows who the free hitter is. He knows where the double team's working and why it looks one way to another one or in protection, what the hand signals and those things are going to be.